we have in church. I want to talk a little bit. Last week, when I mentioned when we had the memorial, the place was packed with the emotion of having to deal with losing people. And I have a message today that I wanted to preach and well, my doctor's watching me. So I want somebody to find the scripture that says the dead know nothing. I have it up there, but I want you to participate with me because in the last two years, we had the memorial last week. Yeah. We don't get the money. Don't worry about the offer. Thank you. But Ecclesiastes, read it. But the dead know not anything. Read, read that again. For the living know that they shall die. The living knows that, that they shall die. The living. But the dead know nothing. The dead know nothing. Now, I had so many questions last week about changing their conceptualization of thanatology. Thanatology, thanatology is simply the study of the dead. It's the study of death. And oftentimes because of our lack of involvement in our communities and let me let me let me go another way look around these walls just take a look around these walls do you see a window to the outside this is unequivocally a sanctuary because we have no connection to the outside. One of the problems with our religiosity is that it stays within the walls of the building. I'm going another way, I'll come back later but you gotta remember I'm old, so you gotta remind me what I started talking about a while ago. Somebody will say to you, why are you lying in church? Or, I don't like you, but if I didn't have the Holy Ghost, Why are you lying in church? Why are you lying out of church? The problem with Christianity as we have extolled it and that we have promoted it is our oh, Christianity is only in the church. The early church had a problem and I'm going back to where I'm going. I think I still remember. The early church had a problem and persecution drove the early church out of Jerusalem, first century. The 21st century church was in all of the physical world, but it wasn't in cyberspace. The pandemic drove the church into cyberspace. Jakes and I talking the other day and Thomas said, no, well, if we had the internet to begin our ministries, we wouldn't have spent 20, 30 million on TV. And I'm saying to anybody who thinks that they can pastor and preach, start your church on the internet. If three years later you only got five comments,
If you don't have a mask on, you got your shot. Because I'm coming your way. If you can't, now you know that's going, that's going live now viral. You know, they, and they're going to say the preacher got somebody, you know. We have to take this outside of the enclosure. Dr. Oaks, so we can touch people. Dr. Chairman, so we can touch people outside. The only people who don't ask to borrow my money are my children. Because if you take my advice, you'll never need my money. And in, I think Lance said it, Dr. McCarthy said it properly. And I have told you that the meanest animal in the zoo is not the devil. It's the love of money, which is the root of all evil. Not having money, not being broke, but loving it. And this is why we demean each other and mistreat each other over money. Slavery, drugs, human trafficking, robberies, murders, marriages, breaking up. It's all about money. And the preachers have manipulated us. They didn't exploit us. The difference between exploitation and manipulation. Manipulation means you're looking for something out of the deal. Exploitations is what we did to the Indians. We just blew them away. Let me go back to thanatology, since you all wouldn't remind me. The dead know Nothing that's happening in the world. They know nothing. So because we lacked our responsibility to take care of our community, when our 17-year-old gets shot in the street, we say the Lord plucked a flower for his rose garden. God is not plucking 17-year-olds, 15-year-olds, and 5-year-olds to put in a garden. We do that to justify the fact that we didn't raise them right, or we didn't deal with the situation in our community that we should deal with. Because in our community, we are told we ain't snitches. Right? Snitching is terrible in a black community. But we want the police to snitch on each other. Talk to me. Y'all got to know I'm, I'm 70 something years old. So I'm way beyond who want to say something negative about me. And if I was, if I cared about that, I wouldn't have done Preachers of LA. So I ain't got no problem with somebody disagreeing with me. We want the cops to snitch. Because if snitching does not happen over there, then that black fellow who was running down the street got shot in the back would never get justice. 
We got serial killers in our neighborhoods. We got sons, nephews, we got daughters who have killed multiple people. Now they introduce themselves to each other as, uh, uh, hey man, I want you to meet Doc. He's a killer. And we sit in a place with no windows to the outside. And we up in here serving God. None of us serves God in the church. We worship in the church, but we serve him in the street. I never heard like the professor's testimony, but that was astounding what he said. We up in there here talking about ourselves, witnesses, arguing over Godhead. Is he Trinity? Is he one? And ain't none of us got it right. Most of the fellas who argue apologetically about Trinity can't explain oneness. We fight each other in the church. My father would say to me, Noel, the most segregated place in America is Sunday. Because everybody's got their conceptualization of God and they think they're so significantly important that we don't even listen to others. I'm going back to thanatology since you didn't remind me. Because of our lack of involvement in Chicago, South Chicago, South Side, our lack of involvement in Watts, our lack of involvement in our Gardena and the rest of California, because the changers of our culture is sitting up in here right now. There are so many jobs out there, but Negroes don't want to work. So we use our energy to manipulate. Do you know that I have to send word to my mothers of the church to keep them from being exploited by other members. Uh, are you surprised? <laughs> Let me tell you something. Somebody will walk up to you before this church is over, before the service is over, and they'll, I ain't got nowhere to stay. <laughs> Can I come to your house tonight? And next year they're still there. <laughs> We have used religion to mistreat our mothers. We've come up, I've had to say to my mother, don't go with no scheme that somebody introduces to you because they're playing on your love for God. to exploit and destroy. Have no heart. Because we haven't done our job in our community, we got the Lord is plucking some flowers, rose garden. My mama's up in heaven looking, looking over me, 
the dead know nothing. Now, to those of you who will bring up the fact that the rich man and Lazarus was conscious, I will not deny theologically that there is some consciousness on the other side. But that consciousness does not link any one of them to the earth. Two things I want to say to you, grasp this, it's not, is once you move out of this life, you move out of time. Time no longer relates to somebody who is out of a body. To be absent from the body is to be absent from time. To be present with the Lord is Abraham's bosom it's rest. Now, for those of us who deal with sleeping, there are nights when you have a restful sleep. And there are nights mm -hmm, when you're troubled in your sleep. Well, you might not acquiesce to that statement. I got two dogs. They in the back. I got Bella and JJ. And let me tell you something. Some nights, they have restful sleep. Some nights, they keep me awake. I say that little that little pug is having a problem today. Nightmares. If you die outside of God, you ain't going to have none but nightmares. If you die in Christ, you're going to rest. Now I'm not I'm, I'm not a, a doctor, so I'm not gonna go with all that all of that. But I know this: watch what you do just before you go to sleep. Solomon says that dreams are a multitude of business. What you take into that subconscious state is what you operated in intellectually, psychologically, in your conscience, in your conscious rather, excuse me, state. So when you're dreaming about that man, it's because you were living about that man. You know what? I want to teach some grown folk one of these. Because we are trying to ease our conscience about what we haven't done, we make up things that aren't real. The dead know nothing here. Let me go back to Lazarus. If you understand Abraham, Lazarus, the rich man rather, Lazarus, you will understand that Lazarus was not talking. Should I read the scripture? I'm quitting in, in, in eight minutes. The rich man was one who was having the conversation 
with Abraham, who from a Jewish situation, am I right? Uh, Yosef is God. Abraham is represented in that particular scripture as God. The poor man, Lazarus, is relaxing in God. He ain't got nothing to say. The fellow who's got the problem is the fellow who didn't die with God. I want to tell you this. I talked to my former presiding bishop last night, and I'm going to tell you this. Somebody who has dementia, they don't know you. Hi, mama, it's me. It's me, mama. Mama, it's me. Oh, you, who? <laughs> now, let me put it another way. Have you tried to remember something you couldn't remember? A name or face and you were antagonized until you could get it. Do you know much time I'm preaching and if I have a word in my mind or I say something that I cannot, that, do you know I will wreck a church <laughs> trying to figure out what it is I want to say. Because it just won't come to mind. And I have stopped many, you have, maybe you didn't notice, but I have shut down a message trying to articulate a word or a thought that I could remember. But you're sitting here, you ain't got the problem. I got the problem. Now, if mama does not know that she doesn't know, she ain't got a problem. Don't lose yourself over somebody got, that has dementia. Because if they don't know that they should know, they ain't got a problem. Mama, 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 it's me, it's me, it's me. Mama, it's me. Who are you? They ain't got the problem. Dead people don't have a problem. Can I talk to you? If you saved in Christ and you die, you ain't got a problem. Now, from a thanatology position, thanatological, there is a gulf between us that cannot be bridged. So you can get to heaven from earth and you can get to hell from earth, but you can't get to heaven from hell. And you can't get to hell from heaven because there's a gulf between us. The jumping place to heaven is from earth. The jumping place to hell is from earth. But there ain't no jump between hell and heaven. And you might take hell to be a place of burning fire. Uh, your conceptualization of your scriptural interpretation is it's brimstone and fire. I'm going to tell you what hell is. Being separated from God. Am 
My doctor said three more minutes. So we make up things to make ourselves comfortable about the dying that we did not prevent. We make ourselves, he and pluck some flower for his rose garden. God would be quite sadistic if he'd give life to an individual and just snatch him out of here by somebody's bullet <laughs> or by you beating up on a woman till you kill her or you women poisoning a man. <laughs> Oh no, it goes both ways. <laughs> Fella drunk as he could be and couldn't understand how he's bruised when he came back to himself. Cause she beat him when he was drunk. Uh, years ago, oh, I'm having church. My predecessor, Bishop McMurray, told me a story of J. Delano Ellis, who is now dead, whose father was so abusive to his mother, beat her to death. And he is in church preaching testimony that the mother when the father died, when his father died, the mother went with him to the mortuary and said, and the only reason I call names because both of them are dead. <laughs> the mother said, is he dead? To the coroner, is he dead? Yes, he dead. Is he really dead? <laughs> you remember that message? Is he really, really dead? And she proceeded to whoop him as every way she could. <laughs> but she want to make sure he's dead. What I'm simply saying is because we have missed our responsibility to the living, we make up little stories to ease our conscience when they're dead. And we say things that have no biblical significance. Nobody is getting to heaven before all of us get there. Uh, Do you know that the body of Christ is made up of living folk and dead folk right now? So Paul to the Thessalonian church said, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. And we who are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds. Your mama, your grandmama, your grandpapa is asleep. He don't know nothing about what you're doing. So now, since y'all didn't remind me in my old age, the conversation jumped over the earth and the person who was most conversing to God was the one who was without God. I am here preaching so that when you die, you're resting. Uh, can, I, can I put another way? You can't try to be saved after you're dead. That's it. That's it. That's it. 
I'm like Bishop Alma. I'm going to talk to these people over here. I'm, I'm through with y'all. Now, you done ran all them women, sold all that drugs, robbed everybody you want to rob, do your deal in life. Wouldn't give your life to God in life, but you trying to get saved when you die. It don't work like that. Don't work like that. You got to get him now. You ain't get him when you're dead. There's a gulf between us that I can't bridge. I can't, I can't make the jump. Now, the rich man says, the rich man says, if somebody would go see my brothers. Now, now all of a sudden now he's an evangelist. <laughs> if somebody from the dead would go see my brothers, it'll keep them from coming where I am. He had a heart, didn't he? Down in Jamaica some years ago, <laughs> two boys went to rob a man. They climb up. The first boy stuck his hand in the man's house trying to get in. But the man had a machete and knew he was coming. When he stuck his hand in the window, and chopped the man's hand off. So he comes down the ladder and the other guy says, what did you get, what did you get, what did you get? He says, a whole lot of stuff in that window, go up there. <laughs> now notice, the rich man did not have that attitude. He's in hell, but he wants his brothers not to come. That's why you overcome with your testimony. Because you help people by telling them where you are. I'm sick of church folk who act like they ain't never done nothing. I'm closing, I'm closing. If somebody would come from the dead, my brothers will be saved. Sir, somebody did come from the dead. And his name is God bless you. Somebody did come from the dead. That's why we preach the death, the burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Because he came from the dead. Ah, that we might have the right to the tree of life. I'm closing, but I gotta go gospel. I feel a little Baptist coming on here. One tree got us in trouble. The other tree got us out of trouble. And we end up with the tree of life.